and Emma Thomas is Patricia the film. They're also married to each other. And they have four kids. I don't know what, how you do anything. At any rate, um, I wasn't going to exactly say why Dunkirk, because this is one of the greatest stories in the history of Britain. Fantastic military disaster that ends in something great. Just tell us about approaching a real life event like this, because you have to honor the people, I suppose, and you're making yeah. a big entertainment. How did you prepare for the film? Well, I mean, really, uh, it was a process of a lot of intensive research to, to get the events of the evacuation kind of under my fingers, if you like, before I wrote the screenplay. Um, and then what I decided to do was create fictional characters to sort of lead you through the events as I understood them and as I researched them, um, and try and touch on a lot of different things that, that I had seen in these first hand accounts. And they give me a couple of books of collected first hand accounts of people who were there, which is, is, is really inspiring to be able to read people's words who, who actually lived through it. And I actually did then uh, get the privilege and honor with my uh, historical consultant, Joshua Levy, uh, of going and meeting several of the veterans. There are not that many left. They're well into their 90s at this point. Um, um, I got to sit with, with several of them and, and hear their memories firsthand and a lot of that material worth its time. Presumably lots of contradictory stories. It's one of the great things in the film is patient men queuing to get on a boat and then chaos somewhere else. So you must have heard a lot of stories. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about, I'm sure the audience is interesting, I mean, this isn't a war film. There's no gore. You don't see the enemy. There's no film star heroics. It's not all the things I would think of as a war film. So just tell us about that. What, what, what was it that drove you to make the film the way you did? When I thought about what was interesting to me about the story uh, of Dunkirk, it was that it's not a traditional war story. It's not really about the battle. I mean, there's a battle raging in the middle. The evacuation itself is a very different thing. It's really a, a suspense story. And so for me, the language of the suspense film, the thriller, seemed more apt for telling this story than, than a, a straight war film. Listen, the way you see it, he never takes his foot off the pedal. It is agonizing. I was just saying uh, to Chris and I, I had to get a lie down after I watched it. Just <laughs> um, uh, has curated a, a season here at um, NFT, so please do come because he's picked some fantastic films that exactly sum up some of these things, as well as a war film that got called by the Western Trump. I mean, great films. Film, we have to talk about film, the look of the film. The film feels real. I mean, the only other two films I've seen with Dunkirk here, one is shot in Canberra Sands and the other is shot in Red Car. We're in Dunkirk here and you shot on film. Tell us about shooting on IMAX and what that brings. Because I think a lot of people think that shooting film is some weird little <coughs> thing that somebody over there is doing. It's really important for the pleasure of making this film. Can you say something about that? Um, I mean, I, th I think that, you know, it's something, as you know, we champion for a long time is, is continuing to shoot on film and on, on you know we've been gradually shooting more and more footage in, on, in large format and the great thing about this film was that it, it was perfectly suited for these very loud um, um, IMAX cameras because there's not an enormous amount of dialogue um, compared with Chris's other films and um, unfortunately it's, you know, it's a little tricky on a beach with you know, the salt water and the sand and, and so on but the truth is um, you know, actually, I'm gonna, there is one very good anecdote which I'm going to tell you, which we haven't really talked about, and we should, frankly. Um, but the, 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 you know, film. <laughs> Chris is wondering what on earth I'm going to say. Um, no, I mean, the film cameras, they took a beating, but it worked absolutely perfectly. But there was one very specific incident which happened where we were shoot. I'm trying not to say too much, but yeah. basically, it ended up, a, an IMAX camera ended up underwater for about four hours. <laughs> and um, yeah, film, it was a scary moment during which I was, before we even retrieved it, I was calling the lab and saying, this is what's happened, how are you, you know, what should we do? And they said, mm, you know, if you were in LA, we'd say just keep it in the water and we'll bring it straight here. As you have to ship it all the way from Holland back to LA, we might think about it a little differently, but, you know, and they gave the camera team instructions. We sent it back, they processed the film, looks amazing and the camera had to have a little bit of you know reconditioning but it's fine now if it was shot on digital there would be nothing left of any of it so i'm just saying <laughs> 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 Camera 
camera is a huge thing. It weighs 54 pounds, which is three and a half, more than three and a half stone, but it's the size of a Labrador in weight. So imagine carrying a Labrador on your shoulder, which is what we've always been uh, camera guy is doing. Anyway, but the, what I want to say is that the, the, the aerial photography, uh, we were chatting earlier and I was saying, you know, I'm quite old, I've seen a lot of films, I've never seen anything like this. And I wasn't thinking about what I was watching because I'm so in the moment, but when I came out of that film, I don't know. I just don't know what, how you did what you did up there. Well, you we really think you're in that spit fire. Yeah, that's what we wanted to do is, is really make an immersive I love planes, I love aerial footage. <laughs> We've done aerial work in our other films, but we never really push it this far. And there are a lot of different things that went into that, but one one thing that I was determined to do, which we were able to pull off, is quite often when you look at um, these scenes in, in films over the years, there can be some really spectacular aerial work, and then the shots of the actors kind of let it down because they're clearly green screen or back in the day and they're back in sort of a. And so one of the things we were able to uh, get hold of a, a plane called the Yak, which is a Soviet era plane, plane made in Romania. And it has two cockpits, front and back. It's about the same size and shape as a Spitfire. So we were able to dress it, remake it to look like a Spitfire, mount the camera on the wing or the fuselage or wherever we want it, put the actor in front of the plane or the back, depending on the shot, and then have the pilot fly it from just our shot. And so we could actually take the actor in the air, dogfighting. You know, real spitfires on either side. And, uh, and in that way, you know, really uh, maintain the tone of, of the photography. And, and that was a determination. Boy, it was a, a huge help in figuring out how to get this huge camera, as you said, the size of a library, into a, a small spitfire cockpit. And, and in, in the end, with a lot of work between IMAX and Panavision, they were able to develop some snorkel lens attachments and things so that we could mount the camera somewhere else, you know, behind the plane or whatever. And then angle, you know, with this, this special angled lens and get right over the shoulder or put the lens exactly where the head of the pilot would be and really try and give you, you know, a first person point of view. I have to say to the audience that Chris and Emma, the, the, as Emma said, are great champions of film and seeing films the way the director intended, so bringing 35 milk back for archives like ours and they have been fantastically generous. I would like everyone just to say thank you because the National Archive has a really great donation from them to make 35 mil free. So. I'm pleased you're also about now, but I don't want to be too crass. <laughs> Honestly, the film is great, superb, well done. So, thank you. 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 Thank you